I was taught coming up that if you wanted to inspect the condition of the wheel bearing, you'd grab the wheel and give it a good shake. If you could feel any play, then the wheel bearing was no good. But if you could grab a modern automobile by the wheel and you feel any play in the tire wheel assembly, well, that bearing failed a long time ago. And if you don't perform your repair correctly, the new bearing isn't going to last very long either. So how should you check a hub bearing and properly service one if it's failed? That's the topic for today's edition of The Trainer. Failing bearings can present a variety of customer concerns or symptoms to your shop. Among the top of the list is abnormal noise coming from one of the wheels. But don't forget things like abnormal brake pad wear or brake pedal pulsation, abnormal tire wear, sh uh, shimmy or vibration in the front end. Any system that uses the wheel speed sensors can be impacted by a failing wheel bearing. And as I mentioned earlier, any noticeable play in the tire wheel assembly can be indicative of a failed bearing. But what is the correct way to inspect a hub bearing? Start with the wheel on the vehicle. Rotate the wheel slowly by hand, listening for any abnormal noise or feeling for any roughness or resistance to smooth rotation. Next, grab the wheel at 3 and 9 o'clock and rotate the wheel assembly back and forth approximately 90 degrees while pulling out on the wheel. Again, listening for any abnormal noise or feeling for any roughness or resistance to movement. Repeat this step, but now push in on the wheel while performing the test. Continuing with this basic check, move your hands to the 6 and 12 o'clock positions and repeat the wheel oscillations we just completed. Again, first while pushing in and then while pulling out. Any abnormal noise heard or roughness felt is caused for a more detailed inspection. Remove the wheel assembly from the vehicle. Remove and properly support the brake caliper assembly. Then remove the brake rotor. Slowly rotate the hub, feeling for any roughness or resistance to rotation that could indicate a failed bearing. Any looseness felt could be an indication of a failed bearing or an axle nut that has backed off or was improperly installed. Check the bearing clearance using a dial gauge. Start by cleaning the surfaces where the gauge will mount and contact the hub. Keep the tip of the gauge perpendicular to the hub or as close as you can. Then grab the hub at 3 and 9 o'clock and oscillate at least 90 degrees 3 to 5 times while gently pushing in. Repeat the hub oscillation procedure but this time pull out rather than push in. Note the variance on the gauge and compare to OEM specification. In the case of the Corolla, it's 0 0.05 millimeters or two thousandths of an inch. Replace the bearing if the specification is exceeded. You can also check for variance in the hub face itself. It's not unusual for the hub to become deformed 
through normal incidents like um, hitting a curb or a pothole. Uh, simply clean the outer surface or the outer edge of the hub face and then use your dial gauge to measure the variance much the same way as we just did. Compare that to spec and replace the hub if necessary. Now let's move on to the removal and replacement. The Toyota Corolla that I'm working on uses a Gen 1 style hub bearing, that is just a replaceable bearing that, we're gonna, that we have to install into the hub. And this particular uh, bearing is from a company called FAG that's part of the Scheffler group of companies and also our sponsor for today's video. Now I have a couple of choices when it comes to replacing a Gen 1 bearing. I can either remove the steering knuckle as an assembly and then use the hydraulic press to press the uh, hub and bearing assembly in and out, or I can use what's called a hub tamer, an on the vehicle hub and bearing removal and installation tool. So I'm going to opt for using one from a company called OEM Tool. We'll see how that works. The first step is to gain the access I need to get the kit's components in place. Let's start by removing the CV axle nut. I want you to note something here. You see the split in the inner race of our replacement bearing? That means that the clamping load or preload applied to the bearing during installation is critical to setting the internal clearances of this bearing. That means applying the proper torque to the CV axle nut. Failure to torque this nut properly could result in premature, even immediate failure of the Gen 1 bearing and it applies to all later designs as well. So keep that in mind anytime you're removing this critical fastener always tighten to the correct torque spec. Never use your impact gun. Next, I'm going to disconnect the front tie rod. Then it's on to separating the strut from the top of the steering knuckle. Well, this should give us enough room to get in there with the OEM tools hub and bearing kit so that we can remove the uh, hub assembly from the steering knuckle on the car. That'll save us some time. But no matter which process you use on the press or on the car, it's not uncommon for one of the bearing races to remain on the hub. And that's when you have to make a call. You can either uh, very carefully remove the race or you can replace the hub. Now, that's one of the reasons for doing that hub variance measurement that we showed you at the beginning of the video using the dial indicator. If it's already out of spec, there's no sense in trying to reuse it, and that, again, will save you some work. The first step is to remove the hub from the bearing assembly. Once the hub is removed, we can remove the snap ring and then the bearing assembly itself. If the snap ring is stuck, use some penetrating oil to help loosen the rust. With everything removed, inspect for any visual damage or distortion. Using a wire brush, honing stone, or other suitable tool, clean the rust from the inside diameter of the steering knuckle and the snap ring groove. With Gen 1 bearings, the shape of the inner race will conform to the shape of the steering knuckle's inside diameter. Not a bad idea to use a bore gauge or a snap gauge to verify that the ID is relatively round before reusing the knuckle. Now it's time to go back together. Now while this model is not equipped with ABS, if it were, we need to be aware of whether or not the replacement bearing is equipped with an encoder ring, part of the ABS system. On many models, angular transducers or encoders are used to record wheel speed. For this purpose, an encoder wheel is located in the seal of the wheel bearing. In order to ensure that the bearing is installed correctly, it's first necessary to determine which side the sensor ring is located. With active speed recording systems, 
it's easy to determine which side of the bearing has the encoder ring built into the seal using something as simple as a paper clip. Being magnetic, the paper clip will stick to the side of the bearing containing the encoder ring. But be aware that there are other designs that use passive angular transducers, also known as increment rings. These encoders cannot be checked using this method. The relevant segments can, however, be recognized by the recesses visible in the seal. In both cases, the side of the bearing containing the encoder ring must be installed facing inward. With the direction of installation established, apply a light film of oil on the inside diameter of the steering knuckle and install the bearing assembly. Be sure to install the bearing as perpendicular to the knuckle as possible using a driver that will apply the force to the outer race only. And don't use overt force to make it fit. And certainly don't use excessive force when it bottoms out. With the bearing seated, install a snap ring with the gap facing the bottom of the knuckle. This will prevent water from collecting between the bearing and the snap ring. Now install the hub. If you choose to remove the old race, use caution to prevent damage to the hub's bearing face. And here be sure to support the inner race of the new bearing assembly during installation to avoid damage to the bearing rollers. Now it's just time to put everything back together again, following the reverse order of removal. Of course, make sure that as you tighten these fasteners, you follow the OEM torque specs, especially when it comes to that really important one that we talked about earlier, CV axle nut. You know, again, that's responsible for the preload on the bearing, and if you don't torque it properly, you could cause a premature failure of that brand new bearing. Keep in mind as well that if you want to take some of the load off of the transmission, have an associate hold the brake as you tighten the nut. This is going to transfer any of the torque load to the brakes and can relieve the transmission of any unnecessary wear and tear. And finally, when you got it all back together, don't forget that final test drive, making sure that your repairs are correct and proper before you return it to your customer. Thanks for watching.